How fast can we reverse metabolic syndrome? This is the key. Well, I mean, within days you can in certain people, absolutely. Uh, you know, that paper was done by, um, that research was done by a friend of mine called Robert, Professor Rob Lustig, as you know. And uh, the, the blood pressure improved, the waist circumference dropped. Uh, as you said, insulin sensitivity improved. So, you know, it, that's, it's fascinating. Of course, you know, it's a, it's a select group of people with obese, you know, obesity and, and have those metabolic abnormalities. But, you know, those people are the, are the benefit the most and also have the, the quickest reaction, um, as you can see there. The, the, and, and they kept it. I think the point was being made in this paper, the calories were kept the same. So the carbohydrates were the same, but it was, it was fructose specifically getting rid of the, the fruit juice and the sodas that had the big impact. Um, so, uh, I think that's pretty interesting that, you know, it's another, it's another nail in the coffin to the, the calorie hypothesis All calories are not the same, you know, they're, they're all, they're all metabolic, they're all treated differently. So, uh, I think that that's a crucial point. It's a crucial point that, um, so I just screenshot, I'll screenshot the article one more time in detail to, to show. So the title of the article is effects of dietary fructose restriction on liver fat, de novo lipogenesis and insulin kinetics in children with obesity. Um, Robert Lustig, I believe, is one of the authors on this paper. And as you said, it was only a nine-day study. They had all the meals provided. They had the same energy and macronutrient composition of their standard diet, meaning they did not even go low carb. They, all they did was substitute starch for sugar, yielding a final fructose content of 4% of total kcals. And they may say in the paper what the, the prior fructose, uh, fructose content was, but they didn't change the macros, meaning they didn't change the ratios of carbohydrates, fat, and protein. They didn't change the calories. It was isocaloric. All they did was take out sugar and sugary drinks. And the results are striking. Within nine days, it was a nine-day study, liver fat decreased visceral adipose tissue, that adipose tissue inside the peritoneum that is associated with metabolic dysfunction decreased. A little more complex measure called de novo lipogenesis area under the curve decreased. And the changes were irrespective of baseline liver fat. Their conclusions are striking. Short-term, nine-day isocaloric fructose restriction decreased liver fat, visceral adipose tissue, de novo lipogenesis, and improved insulin kinetics in children with obesity. These findings support efforts to reduce sugar consumption. Do you think so? Like, and yet, you know, we're drinking more sugary drinks now. We're eating more sugar. And I think that if we did the data, we would see people are getting fatter during the quarantine. So this is a really strong paper, or at least a strong answer to the question that a lot of people have been asking me, and I'm sure you, okay, so, I want to change my diet. How fast can it happen? It can happen in less than two weeks. And to me, the very striking conclusion here is that we've been in quarantine for six weeks. No, I know. We could, know. Have, we could have reversed metabolic dysfunction and proved all of these measures in millions of people and saved tens and thousands of lives if this had been the mainstream messaging.